I don't think there's a better way to spend quality time with your children other than camping. There may be other ways, but there aren't better ways. You certainly can't get this kind of time on the safety of your couch at home or in your backyard even. Camping gives me that venue to spend that really intense, close proximity time with my kids. I mean, really where you, you build that close bond with them. I can teach them real world lessons. I can teach them real life skills. And probably more importantly, I'm, I'm giving them memories that are going to last a lifetime long after I'm gone. I've said this before, I believe that we are literally mothering our kids to death in the U.S. You know, we try to make life so safe for them, we've got them scared of everything. In fact, I was reading an article the other day that we are raising the largest group of precious snowflakes the world has ever seen. They're afraid of everything, they think everybody's bullying them, they can't take any adversity they're afraid of life instead of embracing it. I've seen this myself, and I can see this in the maturity level of my kids and even the confidence level of my children. This past weekend, we wrapped up our season in the RV at a little town in South Minnesota. And we had a great time, but it really wasn't until the end of our trip that the adventure really began. Now understand, guys, I'm trying to put this into a nutshell for you, but this is a much larger story, uh, one that I'm still trying to wrap my mind around and work my way through. And I'm trying to put this into a short video for you, and I hope I get my point across. I can only hope I do. Because I believe that the lessons that were learned last weekend weren't for my kids. They were for me. And it was directly pertaining to my search for true Christian fellowship and examples of it. And I know non-believers are going to have trouble with this, but I don't believe in coincidences. I've lived long enough to know there aren't any coincidences. So after a beautiful three-day weekend of our, you know, kind of capping last camp trip as a family with beautiful fall weather, I'm pulling my 38-year-old RV out of a valley, heading home, an RV that we've put on 8,000 trouble-free miles in less than three years. It sputters out and breaks down on the side of the road right across from this farmhouse. And I mean literally, right outside of my window was the front door. My driver's side window, there was the front door. And so, you know, I have no reason to believe that it didn't do anything but flood out. I put it in park on the side of the road and turn it over, and within 10 or 15 seconds, the starter dies. It just goes click. All this, I, I just couldn't believe it. After this beautiful weekend, we die on the side of the road, and the starter dies. I mean, it's one thing if I've got an engine problem, I can get out and kind of work my way through it, you know, because I think I could fix anything. But the starter died. I can't even turn the motor over. I can't believe how... You know, just how far far south this thing has turned within a matter of minutes. But I'm still not panicking. I mean, we got this in control. I've got tow insurance, whatever it takes. But we just happened to be out in the middle of nowhere because I was scouting out some, uh, some winter uh, campsites for future winter trips. And I mean, we're really in rural Minnesota. There's a few little small towns sprinkled here and there. But the, the biggest decent city is over an hour away. So we start getting on the, on our phone and dialing for information and trying to find some tow companies. I've got tow insurance. We'll get towed in. No big deal. Um, and we can't find anybody open. And the soonest a tow truck company could make it from this decent-sized city, which is over an hour away, it would be a few hours. And I'm thinking, man, it's like 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's going to be dark. We're on the side of the road. I'm going to try to walk over to this farmhouse. And they're bound to know somebody local uh, that's open. So I go up, knock on the door. Some 70-year-old couple in there, they bring me in. And sure enough, they know a couple people that they can call, but nobody's answering. I mean, it's a beautiful day. I'm sure everybody's out hunting in this area. And so he says, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is just tow you off the road. So this is the first start of uh, just this Christian uh, Samaritan 
type of love thy neighbor action. He gets my family to safety. That means a lot to me. Brings his tractor out, wraps a chain around the bumper, tows me into his farmyard. I tear the uh, the starter off, and I verify that the starter is not working. It's not the solenoid, but the starter actually just gave up the ghost right there in 10 to 15 seconds of starting in front of this guy's house. And so I go, well, I tell you what I can do. I can have this towed in tomorrow. That'll take a couple hours in the morning, and then, you know, they'll probably have to order the starter, which, you know, they'll be delayed a few hours by then. Or, if you'll let me stay here, I'll order the part in the morning. Um... I'll go get it if you'll help me, and then I'll put the starter on, and we'll be on our way. Maybe we'll be out of here by 3 o'clock. And he says, that's great. We'd love to have you. So he invites us in, food, water, opens his house to us, opens his whole house to my family. I had to do a lot of gut checking whether I would even go as far as he went. I mean, he really opened his whole house to me. This is like the good Samaritan type of love thy neighbor uh, example. Uh, We end up watching a movie with him and his family. And uh, we turn in. In the morning, uh, I order the part. I end up spending the whole day on the farm with them working because I believe I, you know, I'll work for my keep. I end up help, helping them with the cows and the hay. And, you know, he's got all kinds of work in the fall. I really enjoyed being with this guy and, and kind of fellowship. My family spent the day with his wife. They were, you know, digging in the garden and picking berries. Uh, just all kinds of fellowship going on. In fact, we made good friends with these people. I even joke that I'm going to come back every year and kind of break down in his driveway, and, and he welcomed that. I think we're, we're going to be doing that in the future. We'll probably come down for a day or two every year. Starter comes in. He hands me the keys to his truck, his old farm truck. I take it in, uh, get the starter, come back. We're already kind of staying goodbye. I go to start uh, the camper up, and all it does is turn over. No spark. And I guess the point here is I I can't tell you how disappointed I am because my kids have already missed a day of school. That's kind of important to them. My wife has an appointment tomorrow that she has to be at, and I've already missed a full day of work with all the orders that come in on Monday. Our hearts kind of dropped. As as much fun as we had, our hearts kind of dropped right there. I mean, we were ready to go home at that point. And uh, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I failed my family, you know, because I'm kind of cocky when it comes to fixing things. And it was hard for me to kind of uh, uh, give over to these people, you know, even even for how generous they have been. It's hard to put myself into that position where I'm at their mercy, you know. And uh, my heart just kind of dropped over all this. And just then, when all this is happening, I got a message from a buddy out of nowhere. You know, how's things going? Are you all right? And... Uh, You know, again, I'm trying to put this into a short story for you, but I say, no, it's not okay. You know, we, uh, the camper won't start. I thought we were out of here. And he says, no problem. This is a Christian brother, by the way. He says, no problem, man. I'm coming after you. Now, you got to understand, this isn't half an hour away. This isn't an hour away. This is three hours away. Now, he works. He's he's actually traveled all weekend. This is Monday, about 5 o'clock by now. And he's willing to drop everything and come after me and my family to rescue us, basically. And that's how I felt. And, you know, the lessons that I got out of this is that I think a lot of times we don't have that close fellowship because we won't allow ourselves to get into a vulnerable position. Nobody wants to be vulnerable and be relying on somebody else. And so we spend our lives, I think, especially in our culture in, in the U.S., trying to be so safe all the time, you know, so self-efficient, you know. We're, we're all about self and keeping ourselves safe. And so there's no room for that kind of fellowship. Now, I'm, I'm not asking this to bug anybody. I'm not saying it as a hit. I'm just saying how many guys do you have in your life that you know that would do that? How many guys, if you go to church, do you have a church that would do that for you? Just to drop everything, drive three hours, pick you and your family up late in the evening at this point. I mean, he's, come, he's coming in about 9 o'clock and then drive you home three hours 
to make sure that you're safe. Overnight, this elevated my friendship with this guy. I mean, I don't even know what, I still don't know what to say and how to thank him enough. But like I said when I started this video, I, I believe the lessons that came out of last weekend weren't for my kids, they were for me. And in this search for true Christian fellowship and examples of it. And I, I got the, the full blast of it in lessons last weekend, both in the kind of neighborly love that Jesus talks about and the fact that somebody's on trouble, that you, in trouble on the side of the road you don't even know, and the way that farmer took me in and, and treated me, and then the kind of fellowship you get with a, with a true friend that'll just drop everything and come after you, no matter how inconvenient it is for him. And so I just wanted to share that story with you, I guess, as part of the lessons and the way I'm working through uh, this whole fellowship thing. I, I really think this, again, wasn't a coincidence. And, uh, you know, I, it was meant to happen, and it was meant to happen that way, and I wanted to share it with you guys as well. You know, have you guys experienced that? Do you have friends in your life that you know you could call that 1 a.m. call, because that's how I, I feel about this guy. If I had to call him and I was in trouble, I know that he'll come after me. That's the kind of fellowship real Christians should have and be practicing. And it was a lot of gut checking for me. Anyway, I'll talk to you later.